the number one question that I've always heard, and I said I wouldn't ask you, but I'm going to ask you anyway. <laughs> are leaders born or are they made, in your opinion? Yeah, leaders are made. Thought about this a lot. And, you know, uh, people, I have stood on the shoulders of those who led me. And I, I took, you know, er everything about leadership is plagiarism. I stole everything that I, mm -hmm. that I think about in, in everybody. So there's nothing new under the sun about, about leading people or influencing people. It's, it's pretty old and, you know, oh, another leadership book, cliche, you know, but actually if we had more leaders who led from the heart, who saw the potential in somebody and, and, you know, dragged it out of them, who saw, the future in somebody and said, no, you can go do this. I mean, I got shoved through the new, I got kicked through the nuclear <laughs> power pipeline door. I did not want to go. And so mentors in my life, you know, influenced me to go to different directions. Were kind of nice about it. And others, you know, were not nice about it said, you need to go do this. And, and I went and did that. But, you know, there are, there are people that, that are born with innate traits or people who are born with a higher level of empathy uh, and the ability to connect with a human, a higher ability, a higher sensitivity to how somebody else is feeling. And that sets the stage for, you know, learning the skills and practicing the skills along the way that work for leadership. That's why I say leaders are, are made. Um, I have a certain set of characteristics that I use when I, you know, when, when I just walk around and do things, right? And, and, and you have a certain set, your wife has a certain set. And, and so how you influence people um, goes with what kind of a person you are and, and are you trustworthy? Are you trusting? Do you tend to trust? Um, and so um, the first foundation of a good leader is trust. And I tend to extend trust early. Some people will not extend trust and they want you to prove to them you can be trusted before you know they extend that to you. But I have learned that early extension of trust from a leader, you will you will get that, you will start to set the conditions for a trusting relationship where ultimately you don't want to disappoint each other. So the team doesn't want to disappoint you as a leader, you don't want to disappoint the team as the leader. But it's this human connection thing. And so I learned things all the way through every single command tour I had. So when I was a commanding officer at VF-31, I learned how important it was to learn people's names and to connect with them because I was embarrassed that somebody that would come up to me and and obviously they work for me. I'm, there's one skipper, you know, and there's like <laughs> 300 of them. And then I was embarrassed. It never happened, but I was embarrassed that somebody would come up to me and say, you know, sir, 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 you know, and, and I didn't know who they were. And, um, and so I, I learned how important it was. And, and I have come to find that even something as simple as knowing somebody's name and learn how, and you pronounced my last name correctly. So that's cool. I mean, of course I did. I mean, well, well, no, I mean, people don't and they, sure. and they, you know, here's, you know, my great friend, Mike Manazier, you know, and okay, well, you actually don't know how to say my name, but, <laughs> but there's, you know, some people with very difficult names and there's a great story in the book about a petty officer, Ogbogodo from Nigeria when he was on my D drive, Sacramento. And uh, we went from, you know, he told me his nickname, OG. And I said, no, we're going to call you by your full name, blah, 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 blah. But there's a sure. thing with names. When I got to Carl Vinson, I learned the power of delegation because I can't leave lead 3,000 people in 18 departments, including a doctor and a dentist by myself. I could lead a fighter squadron by myself, but I couldn't lead that. So I learned delegation and I learned that delegation enhanced the trust that somebody has, in, you know, you, you show trust and they go, Hey, thanks, Captain Kanks XO, you let me do my job. And I said, well, yeah, if you didn't do your job, we wouldn't succeed. And so I learned delegation. And when I was the commanding officer of, of the Nimitz, I, I learned kind of how to be, you know, sort of that collaborative leader and and, sure. and be a, an approachable human being. Therefore, it creates this, this uh, um, environment where they're not afraid to tell you something. And so if something bad's going on and you scare the crap out of everybody because, you, you know, you'll bite their heads off when they say something wrong to you. They're not going to tell you what's going on that's wrong. That welcoming sort of persona that, that hey, I'm the same as you. I just happen to be the captain. That that creates a connection at a really comfortable level that people will be able to, you know, be able to share with you. And you, again, you can create the trust. And it's it's a it's a high performing organization. The morale is high. People are, you know, it might not be fun being on deployment, but at least, you know, they're like, okay, I know what I'm doing out here. And I, I like being with that guy right there. And I felt it when I was uh, growing up, I, there were people I wanted to be like, and, and I just enjoyed being around them as leaders because they were just cool and they were inclusive. I mean, Rat Willard was the CEO of Abraham Lincoln when I was a commanding officer of VF 31. And when I first went up there to say hi to the captain of the ship, 
he grabs me by the back of the neck and he's shaking me going, nasty. It's great to see you. And I'm going, Oh, captain, you know, and it's good to be here. You know? So, I mean, it was just, you know, this, this fellowship of, uh, you, you know, connection and, and, and stuff that you can create. And I really, you know, that's what I, that's what I mean all through the book is this ability to connect from the heart and connect as a human being. And, and, and you don't lead with your title, you lead with your own influence and you work hard on connecting with each person that's in your organization figure out what makes them tick. That's why, you know, inclusiveness and, and having a diverse group and being able to, to respect everybody for their background, their perspective, their origin, their gender, their, you know, their work ethic and everything. And to, and to bring them all together and say, Hey, we are a high performing team. And, and what are we going to do to get better? I mean, you just keep, you just keep hammering away on that. And, yep. and I think that's what Trim and I created a, along with Pops Batch Elder, his deputy CAG and Lex Luther, my XO, who picked that up and in the running, the down and end of the ship and air wing, they created that too. So the hard stuff was getting done, but we all felt like we were teammates. Yep. hundred percent. hundred percent. Couldn't have, couldn't have. I mean, I, I agree. Um, and I agree with your answer on the born versus made as well. That's one that I, everybody asks it. And it's funny to me because, you know, I've, I've heard people ask that and there's like, well, there's no wrong answer. And it's like, eh, I kind of think there is. I don't, I don't think people are born purely to lead. I, th I think, you, I mean, I think you're a fool if you think when you come out of the womb, you have everything that you need in your tool bag to lead people. I, you may, like you said, you have the characteristics, you have the genetics, you have the upbringing, you have your experiences, but as you grow, you weren't the same leader as a skipper of the Nimitz as I would guess you were as the skipper of your Tomcat squadron. You had learned things in between there. So, Oh, you're exactly um, right. I mean, that, that, and you, and you reminded me of something. The reason I wrote this book is because I learned so much in doing and there are specific things that I learned and then did. So to make the leader that I was, and oh, you're right. I look back at my skipper tour and where it got, it's, it's a blessing. I didn't get fired as a commanding <laughs> officer of my fighter squadron. and what I learned to be a CEO and Nimitz and a striker commander. But I used to, um, when I struggled commander, I, I grabbed all the XOs, you know, you never, you never heard about, you know, why somebody got fired from their squadron, you know, their sure. loss and confidence ability to command. Right. But you never heard why. And I got them together. And I took away all the mystery and I said, look, I'm going to tell you what I know about some of these firings. It's not going to surprise you. There are things that people get fired for. And so this mystery of, oh my gosh, I've got to walk on, on eggshells here because I'm going to get fired. No, it's, it's, it's stuff that's predictable and you just got to be able to behave yourself and make sure you're taking care of your resources and make sure you're not setting a toxic work environment. And, and you know, the rules on, you know, what you can do there and, and there's no mystery, but I specifically thought about, I need to help people who might not see like what, what, how do I lead? What, what do I do? You know, how do I hold my mouth when I talk? What, what do I, you know, how do I do that? So, so that book, Learn How to Lead to Win is, is my attempt to show people tactically what I did in each situation and how I learned through each situation that I learned so that you can, you have something that go, okay, and that guy's experience, this is how he did it. Sure. And maybe, maybe through a shared perspective, um, you know, some, some things that people can take away from that and sure. make themselves better leaders. Sure. So moving on with that, and you kind of touched on this, but it, I think it's an important thing is if you could pick three characteristics that make a good leader. Well, first of all, there's only two things that a good leader needs to do just to give guidance and remove barriers. That's all give guidance and remove barriers. And so when you lead your team, it doesn't matter how big the team is and you're going to give them guidance. You tell them why you're doing what you want. Does Simon Sinek start with why? So why are we doing this? Since you have to explain a little bit what you want done, but not how you want it done. Right. So why we're doing it, what you want done. I want to go down there and hit that target. And, you know, what questions do you have? How do you want it done? Nope. Nope. You guys over to you guys get, get yep. it done. And then remove barriers. And so because of my elevated rank as the boss or, or your listeners, if you're a leader of, of any kind of level, you have an authority as the leader that allows you to attack the barriers that are in front of your team. And so if they come back and go, hey, boss, we, we're trying to get to that target, but we need like this barrier moved out of the way, that policy or that, you know, that thing, or we need some more money or we need, you know, we need an extra person, whatever that barrier is, your job is to go attack that barrier. Those two things, only two things that a good leader needs to do, give guidance, remove barriers. Now, 
characteristics, calm, consistent, and confident. And you give confidence that it's, it's okay. And so you're calm and confident and they can look to you and go, okay, boss, I think it's wet and we're going to be able to do this. Sense of humor. You got to have a sense of humor about it. Not definitely don't take your, I guess, cliche. Don't, don't take yourself, you know, seriously, your job, you know, take your job seriously, not yourself seriously. It's not all about me. You know, oh, come on, it's, you know, that, that kind of thing that, that always a, a disarming, you know, capability there with your sure. team approachable. Um, and then, and then the last one is kind of, you know, that, that ability to trust and trust, not just with the minuscule task, but the crown jewel, the thing you're most worried about, you're trusting your team to take care of it. The one, the boss says, if you screw that up, you're fired. Best result you're going to get is to give that task to your team and you just ask some really good questions about how it's going, you know, on the way. So yep. I, that's how I would a- answer your question and uh, really work hard on, you know, being an approachable person and going, hey, uh, w- we'll be able to figure this out. Confidence in the team. You guys will be able to figure this out. We're the best sure. team out there and you're, you're firing up. So hopefully sure. that answer your question. It did. Kind of not necessarily my last question, um, but an important question. Does somebody have to be a leader to get something out of your book or can they have zero leadership experience? and still take something away from reading your book? I wrote the book for anybody who is seeking to lead or who is in a leadership role. And in the introduction, you know, it even talks about if you're a grandparent trying to influence a grandson, if you are a teacher at any level trying to influence people in a class, if you are a young high school uh, student uh, who is trying to figure out how to influence her peers, you're a leader. And the introduction starts to go into that. Um, I wrote the book so it would hopefully appeal to everybody. So we spent a lot of time trying to figure out who the target audience was. <laughs> you know, somebody like you or Seep or Trim or, you know, Tac Air, you know, we were really worried about the fact that nobody would pick up the book if they weren't already a Tac Air pilot or, you know, there's an aircraft carrier on the front and they go, well, I'm not going to learn anything from that book because, you know, it's obviously a military related book. And, you know, there's Nasty, the captain, the admiral. He was grew up as a traditional F-14, you know, to uh, F-18 fight. So there's nothing I can learn here. We wrote the book to appeal to anybody who is seeking to learn how to lead from the heart, how to lead through human connection. I wrote this book about how you influence people and how you make people feel. When I say influence, not Machiavellian influence, but how you make people feel. And in my experience as a naval officer all the way through my 36 year career, and then in the five and a half years since in business, the traits still work. They they still work. And so the way that you... Um, you connect with people means a lot. The way you trust, the way you create a psychologically safe environment, the way you give the impression that you know you're okay to talk to, that you're you'll keep confidence, that you're trustworthy, you're not a backstabber, you don't gossip, you don't turn people's opinion on themselves, you you don't argue, you know you 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 take you listen, you take the input from that person, you, you do all these things as a human being. And you create this opportunity that it, and it and it goes right to my Angelos. It's all about, you know, how you how you made the person feel. And I believe that is the root of good leaders is how you made the person feel, no matter how you grew up. I just happened to get to this point about human connection and leading from the heart and and thinking it's important to learn somebody's name and being inclusive through my experience in the U.S. Navy. And there are 33 stories in the Learn How to Lead to Win that that take people through that journey. When you open the book, you see there's Mike's story, and hopefully it's compelling enough to turn the page and you turn the page or turn the chapter. And then when we get to the end of the compelling stories, it's fun stories, you know, flying in Top Gun and, you know, ejecting out of an, a Tomcat and, you know, f- flying a QB and flying through a gunfire exercise in QB. And of course, Mark Baden and Keith Gallagher's story. And I mean, they're great stories. People want to hear all these stories. And so I have no fear that the stories are not going to keep people's attention. The work we did was to put a, a compelling leadership lesson at that story and try to explain what it is that that caused me to think about leadership or what I took away from this. Or in the very beginning, followership, sure. you know, how to yes. be a good follower, which leads into being a good leader. And then I learned in this experience, this is the lesson I learned, and I want to pass that on and pay it forward to people so that we can have more leaders who lead from their hearts, who think it's important to value everybody, who don't lead with their title, 
and are, are more like Trim and I were when we were commanding 5,000 people on that warship, where everybody on earth is like, I love being here. I just like being as part of this team. And if you can create that energy and passion in people that go, that time when we were with you guys, epic. You know, and that's, you know, how you do that, how you put that together. I mean, that's what the book's about. And it really is. Um, I'll be honest with you. When I read your intro and I and I read the intro, hey, if you're a grandparent, if you're a parent, if you're a teacher, if you're this, if you're that, my thought, honestly, pure 100% honest, I was like, no, there's no way this book does that. There's no way. That's just some fluffy BS stuff that's put in the intro because that's what has to be there because the intro is going to be somewhere that you're going to read before you click buy now. And when I finished the book, I was like, son of a bitch, he did it. He did it. Like you did it throughout the whole thing. You kept that. And I 100% agree that yes, a grandparent, a parent, a teacher, a high school kid, whether they want to go into the tech industry or fly fighters or do whatever, play sports, it's all there. But when I opened it up, I was like, no, there's no way. Mm-hmm.